About three weeks ago, I decided that I was going to install OpenSUSE and do a long-term review of it. And that was off the heels of not being successful with Arctic Linux. And I just wanted something that I knew I could run and that would run well. And I chose OpenSUSE as the, it was like the second place winner of the poll that I'd done previously. And I installed it and it, and I've been using it now for about three weeks and I have some thoughts. So as is usual with these long-term reviews, which is odd to say, seeing as I've only done one of them before, uh, what you'll be seeing mostly in the background is going to be B-roll of me doing things in OpenSUSE. And that's not the way I was originally planning on doing this video. I was actually going to go through and, you know, take you through my setup of OpenSUSE and talk about the stuff that I needed to talk about. But for whatever reason, I cannot get OBS to actually record anything in, in OpenSUSE. I just can't do it. There's some kind of dependency that I'm missing, and I've looked it up, and maybe I'm the only one that's having the problem, but it's just weird. OBS will just will not work. So uh, it's the X window capture and the, the video camera. We won't even capture the webcam. It's very, very odd. But simple screen recorder will work, so that's where I'm getting the B-roll from. You're, you're seeing my actual uh, OpenSUSE setup. And I will also try to, while I'm recording that B-roll, show you some of the things that I'm talking about, where I'm talking about the negative things that I, I experienced. But I'll also show you some of the cool things that I experienced. So, uh, unfortunately, I'm not talented enough in terms of video production to actually go through and line those things up. So uh, I apologize for the way this is shot. Uh, just let me say that. So, But I'm going to try to be at least a little bit organized in terms of how I go through and talk about OpenSUSE itself. So let's go ahead and start off with installation. And I think I will go through and install OpenSUSE again in like a VM so that you can see some of the installation here while I'm talking. So you can see what I'm talking about. The Installer for OpenSUSE is fine. I didn't have any problems with it. It's just different. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's not as finicky, I would say. It's not as finicky as like something like Fedora. But it's not, I don't think, as good as something that uses Calamari's. So it, it is a little bit different. I will also say that it is very slow. Like the installation process for... OpenSUSE is very slow, especially if you choose the net install. And this is going to be a theme throughout this review of slow mirrors. And we're going to, I'm going to talk about this much more when we get to Zipper. But just know that if you choose the net install for OpenSUSE, you're going to be there for a while. It's going to take a while for you to install. I would highly recommend choosing the local ISO because that does exist. That takes a lot less time. Other than that, the installation was, it, it was just a Linux installation. It was very easy. Uh, there was no huge pains of set up, setting up and it wasn't a ton of options as far as I remember. So it was actually really good. It was, it just installed and worked just fine. So the next thing I want to talk about is stability. So like I said, I've been using this now for about three weeks and my experience now see i chose the i believe it i believe it is the the rolling release version i think it's called tumbleweed for whatever reason i can't remember names anymore i think it's called tumbleweed but i chose the rolling release version and the stability has been meh i mean it really has been meh uh I've had some instances where KDE won't connect to its own servers, so like I can't download like themes and stuff like that. I've also, for whatever reason, after an update, the startup time on my on my OpenSUSE install on a separate hard drive, it's on an SSD, is like astonishingly slow. Like it wasn't originally. Like originally, right after the first installation of it, it was just as quick as any other uh, Linux distro. But after a couple updates the startup time has gone to northwards of a minute and it's like so bad that at points where i think that it, the thing is just frozen but eventually it does come up but i don't know what's going on there now i'm hoping that after like another couple updates or something like that it will go back to being quick or something but something there happened after a couple updates that caused it to really slow down in terms of startup time uh, but once you, once i got it started up 
the performance is fairly good. It doesn't take a lot of memory. It uses just the normal mono RAM. I, I'm using the KDE version, obviously, and it works. It works fine, and as you would expect, I didn't notice any problems with things like app crashes or anything like that. I, the only big problems I had once I was into the system was, like I said, a, a few times where. Uh, KDE couldn't connect to their own backend or something like that, where you went to, into the settings and tried to install new themes or icon themes or like, something like that, and I couldn't actually connect to those systems. But I think that that might have been a, a KDE problem. Uh, maybe their backend was just down at the time that I, that I was trying it. It's perfectly possible that that's you know, something that's ha that happened. I will also say that... The zipper problems, which I'll talk about here in a couple minutes, uh, also affect things like KDE's Discover, which is their app store. That is slow on its best day, even on other distros. And it is way slower on OpenSUSE. It's just, I mean, sometimes it takes minutes to load. And it's just the dumbest thing. Now, I don't use Discover anyway, so it wasn't a big deal. But it is slow. And, and, and honestly, why would you use Discover on OpenSUSE anyways when there's Yast? And I guess Yast kind of brings me to the next point, is, which is app availability. And I, I will, these next couple are actually going to be kind of crammed together because they all kind of affect each other. So I'll start off with the positives. Yast is amazing. It is a little bit outdated and clunky, but... I love the fact that it's like a one-stop shop for everything. And if you're into using a graphical, uh, a GUI like fa uh, application thing or a GUI driver manager or something like that, and it's all, which is what Yast is, it's like a ton of stuff in a GUI form, you can't find a better GUI tool than Yast. I think it's great. I don't think it gets nearly enough credit. There's just a ton of stuff you can do. You can upgrade your kernel from there. You can go through and install applications and other software from there. You can install drivers from there. You can uh, manage your repositories from there. Uh, there's several other things that you can do all inside Yast. And like I said, it is clunky. So like it will go through as you're installing stuff and open up other windows and you got to go through and uh, it, it's, it's clunky, but it's actually really, really good. I do enjoy it. However, it is slow, and uh, I don't want to get into the zipper stuff yet, but just keep in mind that it is slow. I mean, it is just really, really slow, and I'm not sure what the problem is. I'm pretty sure that it's a mirror problem, and that there might have been ways of fixing this, but I looked it up a couple times, and pretty much everybody has this problem. It's just the software installation, whether you're using Yas or using Zipper, is just slow. And I'll talk more about it here in a minute. But let's go into the positive stuff. So, like, if you have applications that you need to install, which everybody does, one of the things I was really worried about was software availability. And I didn't have any problems at all. Like, almost every piece of software that I needed was right in the repos. Now, that was only because I during installation I enabled all the repositories that I could including non-free rep repositories and that allowed me to go through and pretty much install every piece of software I wanted every like the terminal the, the alacrity was there uh, you know Firefox was there it was like everything that I needed was right in the repos and it's good it kind of reminds me of the arch repos I wouldn't say it's as good as they you are because it's not uh, nothing will ever touch the broad software availability uh, availability of the AUR. But it does have way more software, especially if you've enabled all the repos, uh, than like something like Debian. Like Debian has a ton of software, but you're going to find a lot of stuff in Debian, at least the more esoteric stuff, that is just not there. I didn't have that problem at all on OpenSUSE. So app availability is actually really good. Muy bien. So I'm going to transfer now into performance. Now, system-wide, overall, the performance was really good. Uh, I, like I talked about earlier, the for whatever reason, the startup time got way slow after a couple updates. 
I'm not going to count that against it because I think there's probably something going on with a weird update or something. Uh, we'll move past, past that. If you're on the stable version of OpenSUSE, you probably won't have any problems at all in terms of performance. It was actually, it was, it was good. The problem with performance comes in when you're trying to use Zipper or Yast. And like I've talked about a couple times, both of those things are really slow. And I'm going to focus on Zipper here. Zipper is the uh, the command line tool for installing software, updating your system, and things like that. Now, you can use other tools if you want, but Zipper is the one that you're supposed to use. And it's actually really easy to use. It's, it has basically the same syntax as something like apt-get does. It's not obviously all the same, but for the most part, you know, Zipper install, whatever, Zipper update, whatever, zip, Zipper upgrade, whatever, will work. And it's good. The problem is, is it's, like I said, it's slow. And what really, there's two areas where it's slow. The first time is initial connection. So when you do something like zipper install, say, Firefox or whatever, you'll notice that your terminal just freezes. Like there's nothing, like you hit enter after you've gone through and typed in whatever you're installing, and it just stays there. There's no output whatsoever for seconds, like multiple seconds. Now, Usually, when that happens on any other distro, it means you typed your password in wrong. That's usually what me what that means, because you, you know when you go and you're you're in the command line and you have to authenticate with your password and you've entered the password wrong, uh, it takes a uh, like a. a, a a quarter of a second or a little bit longer than that to actually go through and check the passwords list, you know, and then return the error. It takes a little while. It's kind of like that, only longer. Like, it's weird. It's, it's I'm hoping that I, uh, somewhere along the line in this video, you've sexually seen me do this. And you'll notice that right after I hit the, the enter key on whatever I've done, there's this lag, there's, there's this delay. And it just hangs there. And then once it starts installing, when you're installing programs, it's not too bad. It does fairly decently in terms of installing software. Now, when you turn that into updating the system, however, it's just as slow as it is when you that during that initial startup. Because it, I didn't time it, but the last time I updated the system, it took probably 10 to 15 minutes to actually update. And that was not a ton of packages that need to be done maybe a little bit over 100 packages that needed to be updated and it, like i said it took about 10 to 15 minutes and i have i mean i don't have the fastest internet in the world but i have fairly decent internet so it shouldn't be that pro much of a problem i don't have any problems like that on arch i don't have any problems like that on ubuntu uh, I, i've never had that problem literally on any other distro they all work fairly decently in terms of speed and what I think it is, and what I talked about earlier, is that there's something going on with the OpenSUSE mirrors. I don't know if they have, if they don't have nearly as many mirrors as like something like Arch does, and it's completely possible. Um, maybe they just don't have any mirrors here around me, and that's you know fine. But it it does reflect on the speed of the system because when you go through an update, and while you can t continue to use the system while it updates you do notice that this thing is slower than what you would expect on a different distro and i like i don't want to be too negative about it but because i did notice it and because i do use the package manager a lot it did it did make OpenSUSE itself feel slower even though the rest of the system is not actually slower it, it still led to that perceived experience of the whole system being slow just because zipper itself is slow and it's so slow especially on updates and on initial connections for installs that i don't think that i could use OpenSUSE day to day just because i would notice it too often like i would like uh, why are you still hanging there why are you still installing stuff uh, i have that kind of mentality where i kind of have to watch the update happen even though i know i can go through and do other stuff I usually when like, I update my arch system, I, I have my main monitor doing whatever I'm doing. And on the other monitor, I have the terminal open doing the update. That way I can watch it like out of the corner of my eye. And the thing with arch is it just speeds right through, right? But with OpenSUSE, it was really, really slow. Like I kept looking like, man, you're still doing that? Man, you're still doing that? Wow. It's still going. Wow. You know, and it's not like I had a gigabyte to download. It was 
like 100 packages. I don't know what the size was, uh, but it wasn't, I mean, I've left my Arch distro or my Arch install for much longer than I'd left the OpenSUSE one and had way more packages, like five or 600, all over a gigabyte, and it didn't take that long. I mean, it was longer than normal, but it wasn't that long. Uh, this was just really, really slow. So I think that's that. my biggest takeaway from OpenSUSE is that the package management, while I loved Yast and Zipper was just fine and the, the app, avail app availability was really good, uh, the package manager itself, which is Zipper, is just too slow to actually be usable uh, day to day. I don't think it would be a, as big a problem if you're using OpenSUSE on a server because you're never doing anything other on a server. Like if you go to a server and do an update, you're going there to do the update. You know, it's just, it doesn't, I mean, sure, it sucks that it takes a little bit longer, but it doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't have that perceived like, why is it still going and I, you know, I'm, I want this to be done. I need to shut down my computer or whatever kind of thing. So I, I think for servers, probably OpenSUSE would be uh, much better in terms of not noticing that package manager slowness that I experienced. Uh, just moving on to some general annoyances. Now, I don't actually have that many, to be honest. I talked a little bit about the whole startup time not being... Uh, good after an update and I don't think that that's a huge deal. I think it has something to do with an update. I also talked about how at one point or another KDE's stuff just wouldn't connect to their online platform. Again, I think that probably has more to do with a KDE problem than an OpenSUSE problem. Uh, my other thing is that even though this is a rolling distribution, some of the software that's pre-installed at least is still somewhat behind. It's not as far behind as something like Debian, but some of the KDE stuff was a little bit older, at least at the time I initially installed it was a little bit older. It did get updated, so it's not a huge deal, but I did notice it. So in conclusion, I actually really liked OpenSUSE. I, I'm happy that I tried it out. I hadn't tried it in quite a while. Uh, the last time I tried an OpenSUSE-based distro was when I reviewed Gecko Linux, and I really remember enjoying it, and I really liked it. Uh, but I also remember having the same problems with Zipper that I'm having this time, in that there it's slow. And I don't think that there's any fix for that. I think that that's just an OpenSUSE thing, and as disappointing as that is... I, 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 there's not much, like I said, that you can say about it or, or even do about it. Now, I, I did kind of answered this question earlier. Could I use OpenSUSE as my daily driver? I said no earlier, and I think I'd probably stick with that. I, as long as there were other distributions, as long as Arch exists, I don't think that I would ever switch to op OpenSUSE as my daily driver. Uh, not that I couldn't, though, because... Despite how slow Zipper is and how annoying some of the performance stuff was, I actually did really enjoy my time on OpenSUSE, and it was just, it was fun. Like, I enjoyed sticking in KDE for a while and, you know, just playing around in KDE, and it's something that I kind of dedicated myself to was sticking into KDE, because I did not want to just install DWM and try to... Uh, get up my regular setup. I wanted to use OpenSUSE the way the OpenSUSE guys kind of want you to use it, and it was fun. Uh, I also enjoyed a lot of the other stuff that you know. I I loved Yast. I I think Yast is great. I think Zipper is great. I just wish they were faster. And so if 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 Arch disappeared, I think OpenSUSE may be like my second favorite distro. Uh, but it has flaws that I don't think that would allowed me to be completely happy with it. The Mostly the performance stuff that I talked about with Zipper. So uh, I, I'm i not switching to this. This is probably not going to be, will, will probably will not remain installed on my computer. Uh, but I did enjoy my time with it. I'm glad I checked it out. And I will definitely check out OpenSUSE again in the future. Hopefully the Zipper thing gets fixed over time. Um, but I don't probably think it will. Unfortunately, I think it, this, that has more to do with infrastructure than it does with actual, like, 
software that they can roll out to fix. So that those are my thoughts on OpenSUSE. I probably could have talked a lot more about this if I had actually been able to show you this stuff uh, directly. Uh, for Like I said, that OBS problem is just stupid. I'm not blaming... Open, open SUSE for that. Uh, I think that there's just a missing dependency somewhere, and I couldn't find out what it uh, what it was. So uh, I apologize again for the way the this video was shot. Uh, I, I hope that I did an okay job with the B-roll. Um, I'm not really used to shooting B-roll, so um, <laughs> it, it, you know. But still, I, I, I'll try to do better in the in the future. If you have an idea for my next long-term review, leave that in the comments below. You can follow me on Twitter, at the LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2 is Fun 2, Patrick L., Marcus, Meglin, Jackson, Knife and Tools, Steve A., Mitchell, Art Center, Merrick Camp, Joshua Lee, J-Dog, and the BSDs Rock. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.